Hi everyone, I just wanted to take some time to follow up on our discussion from a couple of weeks ago on technology boundaries. Uh, I'm just going to basically go through the same tools and uh, main points that I went through the last time. So let's go ahead and jump in. You may remember that I started the conversation with this diagram saying that you know when you're creating technology boundaries there's really three levels that you have to think about. There's the, the the child level, the home level, and then the device level. And so let's uh, first talk about the considerations at the child level. So when you're creating boundaries for your child, there are just a few things you probably need to think about. And this really has less to do with the technology itself than it does with the uh, parenting that you're, that you're doing in your house. And I know every family has different boundaries, different types of parenting. Uh, so I'm not a parenting expert. Uh, I'm just kind of sharing some of the boundaries that we've that we've used and they, they may be helpful. Uh, so the first is limits on screen time. And the question came up, what's appropriate? And I said, you know, at least for us, it looks different now than it looked before we had to go into um, shelter in place in our homes. And so before we were very strict about two hours of screen time per day, um, and that even included using the computer for school assignments. There were times we had to go over that because a major assignment was due or something. But now, you know, they're getting all of their instruction through the computer. They're watching hour-long lectures on their computer and then completing assignments. So there's, it looks a lot different. We've still tried to limit it to two hours of what we call technology free time. And so uh, using their computers for school is a lot different than watching videos or playing video games or watching movies. So we still try to limit it to two hours. So definitely have tried to put limits on screen time in terms of using technology for their own entertainment. Mainly because every minute that they're using their technology for entertainment is a minute that they're not outside, they're not doing something more productive. And we still want them to be able to do that kind of thing. We've also uh, been doing this for a long time where we put devices to bed. So um, in the evening, uh, my children, as I said in the, in the talk a couple of weeks ago, don't have phones, but they have tablets, they have a Chromebook through school, they actually have their own Chromebook too from the that we had got them before they uh, started uh, middle school. Uh, so we put those to bed. That means that they are not in their rooms, uh, that they get uh, turned off at a certain time. For us, that's about eight o'clock. Uh, they, they charge, you know, if they need to be charged. Uh, so they're ready for the next day, but they're, uh, they're not in their rooms. They're away from uh, where they're sleeping and away from where you know we can't monitor them. And I know a lot of our friends do the same thing, that at a certain time the kids hand over the devices, the parents put them either in their room or an office or somewhere else, they plug them in and they're off limits. We've also created technology zones, so there are places where the, our boys can use their technology and places where they can't. So these days, now that they're doing most of their schooling, in fact, all of their schooling from the house, they're allowed to put on, they're allowed to use their, their school computers in their rooms. We just make sure they leave the door open. And that's because that's where their desk is and they can have a place to write and take notes while they're watching these video lectures. But when they're on their own devices, you know, tablets and that kind of thing, uh, they either need to be out in the family room or we have kind of an extra room at the back of our house where they can they can use them, but they can't be in their rooms with the doors closed with their technology that way. We just don't allow that. We don't have TVs in their rooms, uh, no gaming systems in their rooms. Everything is out in a place that is considered family area. So we've, we've had to be really... Uh, strict about that. So no tablets, no personal computers, no technology or, or gaming systems in their rooms. Rooms, you know, we've said originally they were for playing and sleeping. Now they're just also for homework. Uh, and that's just kind of how we 
set that up. And I think it's important to have discussions with kids about what is appropriate and what's not, uh, because there are times they're going to run across things that, that you just can't control, and uh, it may be something that you didn't want them to see or, you know, conversations you weren't quite ready to have. So it's important to go ahead and, you know, have those discussions about what do you do if you see something that you know isn't, in, isn't appropriate. You know, that could be language or subject matter that comes up in videos that the kids like to watch. And what we do is just say, you turn it off. If you know it's not appropriate, you know, our boys are 12, they know, um, you turn it off. Um, because things like YouTube are linked to my account, I can see in the um, history of my YouTube account what's been watched. And if I see something in there, you know, I can always talk with them about it. And just say, you know, this is the kind of thing, if you run across it, you should turn it off. And, and most times, you know, they'll say, yeah, we, we knew that probably wasn't good, so we just shut it down. Uh, so it's, it's important to have those discussions about what is appropriate to watch on your device, what's not. Uh, even though they've gotten training from at school about what the school computers can be used for, I think it's important to, to also reinforce that at home, that it's to be used for homework. Um, and school-related uh, business uh, and not for entertainment. That we have devices at home that they can watch their own videos and movies and they need to you know, kind of keep those separate. Okay, so we've talked about some boundaries you can set at the child level, you know, talking with your children, kind of making some of those parenting decisions. Let's talk now about some of the boundaries you can set at the home level. So I think that's also really important. Uh, some changes you can make to the devices that everyone has access to. So one example would be uh, having some sort of filtering software. I'm going to show you one way to do that. We'll look at that in just a minute. It's called Disney Circle, and it's a way to filter and set permissions on your internet at home. And then also... I'm going to show you a couple of different strategies for changing permissions on your streaming accounts. That would be YouTube, um, Amazon Prime, and uh, Netflix are the ones we're going to look at primarily. All right, so let's first of all take a look at the Disney Circle. So I'm going to go over here and find it on my iPad. And the Disney Circle is a device that you actually plug into your wireless router. So all of your Wi-Fi goes through the circle before it hits your devices, and it enables you to set time limits, uh, bedtime limits, and content limits on the different devices that are on this, uh, on this circle. So it's going to take a minute to load. That's okay. All right, so you can see here, I've set up profiles for my two kids, and then I've also got... Uh, a profile for the Xbox. So we'll look at the Xbox first. So this is the way that we make sure that no more than two hours a day um, are happen on the Xbox. So you can just look here at time limits. And I actually added a little extra time today. So I think I set it up for two hours and 30 minutes because I've been told that um, Fortnite sometimes takes a little while to uh, to load. So I'm just going to close that. Um, so try to account for loading time and that kind of thing. So you can see here at two hours and 30 minutes, it is shut off on the Wi-Fi and games that require an internet connection like Fortnite, Rocket League, those kind of games uh, no longer work. So pretty handy. So I'm going to go back here and cancel that. Um, you can see here my son. Uh, so I've got it set up. So He's got his tablet there. You can you can add devices to the um, to the profile, and so if I click on that, you can see all the devices, and I can just um, I can add more devices to his profile if I want. So it filters based on content. So I can I can ban. Um, things like, we'll see here, you can see Facebook is allowed, so I can then say that Facebook is not allowed. Um, you know, you, so you can kind of decide what is allowed and what's not allowed. You can put down here, um, safe search and YouTube restricted, so that when they're on their devices, 
uh, it puts it on, you know, like family friendly settings. So I'm going to save that. Um, I can put in here, I can, it'll tell me how much time he's been on. So obviously like he was using Twitch, which is a video game platform. Uh, and you can see some of the other services that were used today. And so you can kind of get an idea every day um, when he's online, kind of what is what he's doing. All right. So there's uh, the circle. This is my the home setting. So I can go in here. Oh, I was going to show you one more thing. Go back to Sam. I can look at his history. So it'll first of all show me um, all the sites that he's visited. And these were the sites that he visited that were allowed through on the network. So you can see all of these and you know, nothing, mostly Twitch, because that's what he was doing earlier today. Um, if I go to filtered, uh, now on filtered, this could include content that's embedded in pages in the form of ads or something else, and it filters those out. So it can filter content that's embedded into pages as well. So if something shows up here, it doesn't necessarily mean he was visiting any of those sites. It's probably going to say Twitter and Facebook a lot. Um, and that's mainly because uh, on the different devices, it's filtering that out. So he's not trying to go to Twitter and Snapchat and Facebook, but um, those pages, um, content from those sites may load or be embedded in some of the, the web pages he does go to, and that's what's being filtered out. But if anything inappropriate was searched for or whatever, it would get filtered and you would see it in here in the list. So that is the Disney Circle, and it's a great way to uh, create some boundaries in terms of what is even allowed through your home network, and it would apply to any device. So if I go here, um, I can go here and go to devices. This lists all of the devices in the house, and I can click any one of these and add them to somebody's profile. All right? So... That is the uh, Disney Plus, or the Disney, I think I said Disney Plus, the Disney Circle device. And you can buy it on Amazon. You can get first generation, second generation. We have kind of an old one. Um, and you're looking at anywhere between 85 and 150 bucks. All right. So pretty good, pretty good investment, I think. All right. Well, the first thing you should probably do uh, is uh, go into the different accounts that everyone in your home has access to, you know, Netflix, Prime Video, YouTube, that kind of thing, and change the settings on those accounts so that only certain types of content are available. So, for example, here where it says uh, this is Netflix, uh, you can log into Netflix once you are logged in. This is through my web browser. You know, go here, go down to account kind of scroll down to profile and parental controls. You can see here under my profile that uh, someone has to have a, a, a password to actually access the profile. So I can put it on what they call profile lock. You can look at viewing activity um, for, that people have been, you know, you can see what people have been watching on this account. So you can see here like you know, lots of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., um, things like that. So uh, you can get kind of an idea of what people are watching on each of those accounts. Uh, and so, like, you know, these are the accounts for my kids. Uh, and you can put those different restrictions on there. So, for example, here for this one, I can make the TV viewing restrictions to be uh, what's going to make me put my password in, but you can put it, you know, at PG, PG 13, TV 14, that kind of thing. So that might be a good idea to put some restrictions on uh, the different um, accounts so that maybe uh, some accounts um, can only see kid content. You can do that um, on, uh, on here. I'll just put in my password really quick. So you can um, uh, you can there's uh, on some if, if your child makes a new account a new profile you can click a box that says that it it automatically puts them into the Netflix kids content so that's pretty helpful 
um, over here under um, Amazon Prime, if you go to Prime Video, go to your settings, um, go to parental controls, you can put in a pin uh, so that um, that will authorize purchases on Prime Video and by bypass parental controls. They have to have a pin to purchase. And then you can put limits on um, what they're able to watch. So, you know, for our Prime Video, without uh, they have to have a password to watch anything above um, this level 16, which is pretty much, you know, PG-13 and stuff that's on TV. Then you can apply it to all the devices that are affiliated with this account. So that's pretty helpful. Um, here on YouTube, and I'll just click on this one right here, hit pause. And you'll notice right up here in the corner it says autoplay. So if I toggle that off, it's on that that I just turned it on. If I turn it off, that keeps the YouTube uh, account from automatically playing. If you use Apple TV um, or if you're on a device, you have to go into settings, but there's an autoplay function there, and you can turn it off or on, so that you don't go down that rabbit hole of eternal videos uh, that play based on the video you played last, and you don't really know where you're going to end up. So that's a pretty um, brief overview of ways to change settings on the accounts that everyone has access to, so that you can have some at least some limits on what people are are viewing and what they're seeing and then you can go in and see what people have been watching so it's a, a good way to keep everybody safe all right the final boundary we're going to address today is uh, boundaries at the device level so we're going to be looking primarily at the uh, ways to adjust the settings on screen time on apple devices um, i don't use android Android devices. I'm primarily uh, an Apple person. I know a little bit about the Kindle, but it's mostly iPads, iPhones. So we're going to be looking at that uh, next. All right. All right. Now I want to take a minute and go through the uh, screen time settings and show you how to adjust those so that you can uh, monitor or at least uh, restrict certain things on uh, on the device. Now the Disney Circle is nice because it puts those limits on any device that's on associated with a profile, uh, but those settings don't go with you if you're on vacation, if you go to a condo, a beach house, uh, hotel, something like that, grandma's house, whatever it happens to be, those settings won't follow you. If you set these screen time settings on the device, they follow you wherever the device goes. So there's advantages a little bit to, to both. So first of all, I'll go over here to settings and I'm going to go down to screen time. And so uh, there are uh, a lot of different categories. And I think based on our conversation when we were in uh, the, the Zoom meeting, some of you had some familiarity with some of these settings. So for instance, if I go to downtime, So uh, I can set there to be downtime. So if I click on downtime, now this is my tablet, so I don't have downtime on my own tablet. Uh, the boys' tablets do. So I can say every day from 11 to 6 um, is considered downtime. And then what, uh, so you first of all have to set up the parameters of downtime, and then you can customize which apps uh, and which content downtime applies to, okay? So I'm going to uncheck that because I don't want downtime because I'm sometimes up later than, than that working. So I can go to here to app limits. So I can click on app limits. And let's say here, like, uh, I've got limits. I set up limits on Netflix, YouTube, and, um, and two more. So on these streaming, uh, these streaming services, I have limits and I put it at one minute. I could go in obviously and uh, change that to, you know, let's say three hours, something like that. Okay. And then uh, this select this uh, where it says block at end of limit at the end of the three hours, those apps won't open anymore. So um, that is in addition to downtime. So downtime just means anything that they want to use that they're allowed to use uh, during those hours is fair game. Uh, 
what the app limit does then is it puts a time limit on the app. So even if it's within the um, six in the morning to 11 at night time frame or whatever you do, you know, nine in the morning till eight at night or whatever your, whatever your um, parameters are, um, after they've used an app for, for this amount of time, it, it closes them out and won't let them use it anymore. So uh, app limits set certain time limits on apps. So it could be a game, it could be a streaming service, it could be messaging. Uh, and uh, so there are benefits to both. The downtime means that if it's, uh, if it's uh, outside of downtime, any of the things that you've said don't work outside of downtime won't work. Whereas um, with the app limits, it actually will um, limit that time even more within the parameters that you've set. So I'm going to turn that off because, you know, I may need to use this tonight. Go into communication limits. So during allowed screen time, you can set who's allowed to text um, and communicate during uh, text and call and FaceTime during allowed screen time. So here I could say during allowed screen time, they can text and chat and FaceTime with anybody. During downtime, let's say between um, eight, 9 o'clock at night and 9 o'clock the next morning, they can maybe only receive communication from specific contacts. So maybe I would just choose like, you know, my mom, me, my wife, you know, so they're the, we're the only ones that they can receive communication from during uh, downtime. So that's pretty handy. So that would prevent them from getting texts all night long, which I've realized when I had my niece and nephew staying with us one weekend that that actually happens, getting texts at, you know, three and four in the morning. So um, if I go to always allowed, so these are the apps that would always be allowed. Maps, FaceTime, messages, and uh, that would, but then I, I can put limits on that. So outside of downtime, it could do, or outside of screen time, when it is downtime, I could say you can only get messages or FaceTime or phone calls from the contacts that we say you can. And then you can add apps to it if you need to. Okay, so these are the ones that are always allowed. And someone had asked last time about Safari, that even though Safari, um, in fact, it may not even be lift, listed on here, even though Safari, you tr you're trying to block it, it's still available, but there's actually some, there's actually some uh, boundaries on that as well. So then I go down here to content and privacy restrictions. And you can enable those. So if, if that is green, that means that it's enabled. And you can, you can have restrictions on purchases from the iTunes and App Store. Um, you, can, you can put limits on um, the allowed apps. You know, so if I uncheck something, like if I uncheck Safari, that means that they're, you know, so I could make Safari um, not allowed, you know, so I need it. And then I go in here to content restrictions. And this is where you can go in and you can um, put limits on the type of content that student that your, your, your kids are able to access. So like music and podcasts, that kind of thing. Are they allowed to listen to explicit? You know, and that's, you gotta be, you know, that's kind of weird because even some of the popular stuff that isn't necessarily bad, like, you know, like Hamilton is listed as explicit because it does have some bad words, you know, um, but, you know, do I let my kids listen to Hamilton? Of course, because uh, I listen to Hamilton. Uh, so not everything that is labeled as explicit is necessarily bad. So you have to be, you know, kind of think about what you allow. Um, although I do have it set as clean and Hamilton makes its way through. So, but we do it through Spotify. So maybe it's different if you do it through Spotify, because that's a whole different set of, of con controls you've got to put on. You've got music, you know, you can control on music profiles, movies, you can put, you can put um, limits on the type of movies they're able to watch on their device, um, TV shows, books, um, apps, of course, you know, are there any limits on, on if an app has a certain rating, you know, like if it's a game, you know, some, some games are pretty graphic and, you know, make it a 17 plus rating so you can restrict those on the device. Web content, you can um, 
you can actually uh, restrict um, types of, of content. So obviously, like you can limit adult websites. You could even choose to have only certain websites that are use that are available. Sometimes things will get blocked, but they're not necessarily bad. Like hot box biscuits, you know, who's gonna block that, right? Everybody needs donuts, um, and so that was getting blocked, but I was able to allow it in. Um, and then I can say Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, never allowed on this de device. So even if they go to it through Safari, um, it won't it won't let them download the app. And if they try to go through it through Safari, it blocks it. Um, so in terms of web search content, uh, you can you can block web searching. Um, explicit language, you can if if explicit language shows up in a web page, you can you can block it. Um, or if they do a search using explicit language, you can it'll block that as well. And then of course you can allow or block um, certain types of games. So the nice thing about these settings is they follow the child wherever they go with their device. So if they're out with friends, if they're on vacation, if they're at a youth event, whatever it happens to be, and they have their device, their phone, their tablet with them, uh, these settings apply. And the only way they can turn them off is to um, uncheck that. Of course, I can because I have, I have the code, but in order to do that, um, it's going to ask them for for the code. All right. Um, you can even share across devices. So if you want the same settings on all of your children's phones or devices, you can do that. Um, now, one person had asked last time about Safari. So if you put um, downtime limits onto um, onto the uh, the phone or the tablet. And you'll go in and you notice that Safari is still not, it's not grayed out. But what I uh, learned just you know recently is when you open it, when you try to open web pages, it comes up saying that the, the web page is not allowed. So it'll actually block the content within Safari, but it doesn't necessarily gray out the, the app Safari. So um, it, there is a way to do that. Now the nice thing is, about the uh, uh, content and privacy restrictions is once I um, click that button that there are content and privacy restrictions. Let me go back here. Close out my apps. I'm going to go into Safari. And you can see here when I go to my history, down at the very bottom, clear is grayed out. So my child cannot clear their content uh, that they've been looking at. So like, you know, here my son's been on my iPad looking at Fortnite maps and Twitch, um, and he can't clear that. Um, similarly, if I go to open a new uh, window and see where up here where it says private, private is grayed out, and I can't open a private window. So a private window does not show up in your internet history, and it, uh, it clears everything once you close it. And you can't do that when you have the um, screen time and the, the content and privacy restrictions enabled. So it enables you to actually uh, keep a pretty good, uh, keep good tabs on what they're looking at when they are in the, uh, the, the Safari app because they can't clear their search history on their own without your pass key, which you, they shouldn't have. So you shouldn't, you know, make sure it's something they can't figure out. Don't do like, you know, your birthday or something. But anyway, um, hope those are helpful in terms of setting up screen time uh, settings on your devices. Of course, this only applies to Apple devices. It doesn't apply to Android. I'm not a big uh, user of Android, so I'm not really sure what... Um, how to set these up on an Android. I kind of know on a, on a Kindle Fire, but um, this is mainly Apple devices, iPhone, iPad, and also on a MacBook. All right, so good luck. Uh, if you have questions, send them on to Joe Beth, uh, Dr. Jimerson. She can send them on to me. I can help you the best I can. Um, we'll all kind of figure it out as we go. All right, have a great week.